This is Peggy coming to you from snowy Columbia, Maryland. That's just outside of Baltimore. Um, and it's not too far from the very quiet town of Washington, D.C. Um, for um, as we continue this wonderful um, experiment in um, reducing uh, the cost of the federal government. So <laughs> the only political statement you'll hear from me because the rest of the time we got to talk about having some new conversations around um, around our chapter and affiliate programs. And so um, I'd love to uh, just dive in. Uh, I asked everybody how the uh, weather was going in their areas. And so far, I think that we're the ones with the, the greatest amount of snow. So uh, that was my way of warming up your fingers, guys, because um, we want to really get the chat going on this particular call. We have got uh, a bunch of things to share with you today, and um, we really want uh, you guys to kind of weigh in on what makes sense, what questions you have about things, and how you would add to any of these ideas. You know, when, um, when we were at um, the CEX 18 just a couple of months ago, um, many of the folks in the room said that they just wanted to do something different for their components in this coming new year. Some of them were talking about how do they help their um, and their chapters and affiliates find volunteers. Others were saying, you know, how do we help them get around the burdens of the administrative stuff? Others just really wanted to reboot their chapter programs. And so what's um, super exciting is um, we had been talking about that. We had been um, looking at organizations that were doing each and every those things. And so um, the great team at uh, Bill Highway and uh, Mariner, we went back to all of our notes and took a look at um, what were some of the success things that we had seen, and we wanted to share them with you today. So a quick word about who did some of the, 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 the work behind this. It, of course, is Bill Highway. Um, our wonderful host, um, who uh, is not only um, supporting the profession in all that they do with these webinars and in working with um, Mariner, um, uh, at co-partnering with Mariner on the CEX conference, they also help by co-partnering with you on um, chapter technology solutions. And of course, um, I'm with Mariner, um, and uh, Peter and Carol and I here love to work with volunteers and help them empower. So we went back to all of the webinars that we've done, the conversations that we've had. We also tapped our incredible group of the Sexy Experience Squad and uh, put together what we think are the top 10 ways that you can uh, start a new conversation about chapters. Um, and uh, I want to do it in the David Letterman style, and I want to start with, with um, the bottom of the list and, and head to the top and get to the most important one last. So come on for a ride with us. Now, I will tell you in advance that this is a treasure trove. This slide deck is a treasure trove. Um, and so what you're going to want to do as soon as you get the link at the end is you're going to download this because we have all kinds of, of links and connections to the resources. So we won't get deep on any of these 10, but we're going to give you what you need to get deep on each and every one of them. So. Let me start by asking you a question. I want you to use that chat box. I already got a little bit of your, um, your, your fingers warmed up, I hope. What's your New Year's resolution for your chapters? You know, all of us start in January and say we want to get something done a little differently. So what is your New Year's resolutions that you've established for your chapters or affiliates this year? So warm those fingers up and let's get going. And as you are typing in, Let's see if maybe some of these 10 things or the chatter around these 10 items will help you solve it. And I love it, Kathy. You must have been just poised and ready to type. Awesome. New reporting process that is going to probably come up, I guess, from a couple of our folks. So, oh, Jill, listen, we've got some things we're going to be talking about in terms of chapter leader um, workshops and getting people involved and engaged. Keep these coming. Improve your board orientation. Greater awareness of the resources. Amen, Sarah. If only we could make that happen. Well, I don't know. Maybe we can. Let's jump in and have a conversation. Number 10. Number 10 on the list is tech tools that make your jobs, your volunteers' jobs easier. So we all know that tech can be a solution. The question is, what tech is going to be the solution for you? And 
one of the things I remember so intently from our um, work, from our beautiful session at um, Sexy 18 was a, a comment that Corey made. And he said, any tech tool is a solution, but it might not be the solution. And, and he's right. And so we showed a bunch of them. Um, and also here on the screen, we're just going to point out to you um, a couple of really great resources, um, including the blog post um, that we think is that captures a lot of what came out of um, the the um, the sexy session. But I think most importantly are the tech guiding questions that will help you make a difference as you're navigating. So it starts with asking, what is the pain or the challenge? Um, really ask you to, to ask yourself what are we already using um, how do this does does any solution have to integrate how do you evaluate potential vendors how will you roll it out because having a tool does not necessarily mean you're going to have a solution until people use it um, who ultimately owns the project you need to have a champion how will you receive member feedback and is piloting the answer what does success look like? Now, these are nine questions that we um, that, that we curated from all of our conversations, particularly with the 16 folks who jumped in, actually 18 folks who jumped in on that session. But two of these questions stand out. The first one is, what tools are already being used to address this challenge? Because two of our presenters at that, at that session both mentioned that their solution that they were sharing came from chapters. So chapters were already using tools. So the question sometimes is, what's already out there that maybe you could bring into the fold, you could make it a little bit better, you could um, help others um, take, take a tool that's already in action and using it. And of course, that means that you've got the champions. So you've begun to answer some of the other questions. But the last one is, what does success look like? Sometimes we implement a tool, and then we never really know if it's successful. So we get stuck using something that, that maybe needs to be, you know, deep mind. So get those chapters. Number nine is going to be power up your chapter programming. Do you love the pig? I love him. We, we're, we're saying, how can we hear you guys laughing, right? <laughs> All right. When we say power up your chapter programming, let's talk about what we can do. You can help your folks find speakers. And not just speakers, but people who will engage the folks at that level. So we're talking about, and we had a great webinar where we talked about this, about curating existing lists, so recreating the wheel, about setting up a directory of speakers, and about providing chapters, um, provide every chapter is kind of a look at for programming content. So can you offer a speaker series or provide training to help find the effective speaker? So in other words, what we're getting at here is you can provide the speakers, but sometimes what you can do is provide the training to help your chapter leaders find those speakers. So if you're looking for, okay, how do I make this happen? We got some great resources, including the one on how to help chapters find speakers for their events, which a blog post, and we had a webinar on this as well. Um, some exciting news on this end, um, interestingly enough, the uh, one of the things that we talked about in that blog was a, a brand new um, Rachel speaker that had been um, used or had been available um, to uh, throw them a white label. Uh, Aaron uh, Wolfix from EventGuard uh, just launched an incredible Rate My Speaker um, uh, online tool. So check that out on EventGuard. Go up there and check that out. Maybe this is a solution that um, you can implement for your own chapters. So it's an out-of-the-box, really good program just ready for you guys. So the question always is, no matter what you do with the programming, is um, you've gone ahead and you put this together, but will they come? So one of the things that we found in our conversation, and you'll see in the blog, are um, some things for you to think about as you're helping them with programming. One is incentives. So if one example was um, AADE Diabetes Educator of the Year Award. Actually is um, they asked the subject matter expert to travel to their local organizations to give presentations. So the Diabetes Educator of the Year is an award that recognizes an, an a, a incredible educator, but also ties it to getting that person out into the field. 
Um, discounts. I loved what AMA did. They offer 5% discount off of the speaker fees for all bookings via their portal. So they put together a portal, but then they made it like definitely come and use it because you're going to get a better price on your speakers. And then um, I loved uh, that um, sometimes it's, it's, it's creating that really tight coordination so that you can help chapters um, leverage the speakers that you've had or leverage the calendar. And I loved it. The National Association of Tax Professionals talked about the fact that what one thing that they're doing is that they make sure they get their schedule out there, share it in a way that allows their uh, chapters to then build on that. So um, oftentimes we we think of our some of our um, uh, programming at the local level as comp competition to our national um, and or our chapters think that. So some of that, thinking about this as an integrated calendar will make a difference. All right, moving to number eight. Can we find a way to collaborate with the chapters? And I say, yes, we can. How can we collaborate with the chapters? Well. You know, one of the things is that we have found um, that with the generational shift and the rise of, um, of digital engagement, you know, more of our chapters are starting to incorporate influencer models um, into their digital, their digital um, uh, media marketing strategies. Um, as chapter-based associations are thinking about this, you can broaden your concept of the influencer to say our chapters are actually influencers as an organization and um, they have influence over both your members, your joint members, and then potentially the folks in their space. So if we learn to collaborate with, this, with these organizations, we can maybe ramp up some of our communications, we can ramp up some of our channels, we can ramp up some of the, of the use of our resources and be able to build our programming, be able to build sales, be able to build the voice that we want. Let me show you a couple of things. When you're considering this, um, think about the, the, the components as a add-on to enhance the marketing efforts. Um, think of whether or not your chapters, there's something that your chapters could help you do better. When you do that, you remove the silos and of course you create the local storytelling opportunities. So we have a couple of resources on this, but I also want to share with you that there's a couple of organizations that we highlighted. We highlighted um, ANA's um, Fit, Fit Nurse Friday 5K program as a great example of this, as well as the Landscape Architects, which you see here. They, they um, did a share our Instagram account. Um, the video conference from the Institute of Management Accountants and the International Mountain Biking Association's Dig In campaign. From these organizations, which are successfully, I mean, just having amazing success in their collaboration, they helped us uh, come up with a few key takeaways. First is to show is to find the wisdom, that is to show the value add to members by giving their projects national exposure. Okay, let me, let, me, let me step back and explain exactly what we're talking about that. In the wonderful images that you see here, in that Instagram um, campaign, the national organization allowed their chapters to take over their Instagram account for a day. And the idea was they were to get pictures of the work, the projects, the incredible stuff that their members did and highlight it on Instagram. So the value add here is why would that chapter go to the trouble to collaborate with you, to share on your um, Instagram account, to take your message and push it forward? It's because it's the value add. It's the ability for them to say, I'm giving my members this extra exposure. One of the things that worked in all of those four campaigns was having a dedicated campaign manager appoint a contact for the chapters. Really, really critical because even though this is a collaborative and you're really trying to leverage the chapters, remember, remember that they are volunteers. And um, what we learned really from ANA's Fit Nurse, Fit Nurse Friday program was take something that already has a little bit of activity and build on it. Um, when you do that, when you take something that's already got some experience, then these volunteers who are very busy are more likely to um, jump on the bandwagon, as we say. All right, moving on to seven. Let's harness the innovation at your chapters. 
So one of the things that we talked about, um, and we did this at the hackathon, and we've talked about it in one of our webinars, but this whole idea of, of how do you use the trickle-up approach, um, both in terms of finding an idea that had legs uh, locally and then allow it to um, grow and expand nationally, or also just to be able to take a look at a chapter and use it as kind of one of those really wonderful beta tests for something. So it's hardening the innovation at your chapter so that you can build value for your members. So a couple of ways that you can do this. You can brainstorm. You can say, what are the most successful programs um, that your chapters have introduced? Then ask the question, if it worked here, what made it work here? Hmm, could it work for other chapters? Pick a program, uh, showcase it at the national level. So a great way of doing this, and some of you are already doing this, the question is, are you thinking about it this way? And that is, you know how many of us have it our, we do our um, a chapter idea swap where we ask our chapters to come and show something that they've done, um, or we or we highlight the, 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 the chapter program of the year or the, or the chapter volunteer strategy of the year. Okay, well, take those programs, take that thing, Ask the p folks in the room, who else is interested in this? Is this worth us taking a program that was homegrown and adapting it for all of our other chapters use? So let them tell you what they really want. And then at some point, decide whether or not you're going to be the driver or the facilitator, well, which will work better. So for one of the organizations that we highlighted in that webinar, they really were just the facilitator. So there was a group that was doing an incredible outreach program into the community following the flood. And what they did was they didn't try to try it. When they saw that it worked, they saw that they needed a, a layer of infrastructure so that all people could get engaged. And they simply put that up there and then allowed the folks, the champions, to say, come use this, be like us. So it's quite possible that in many cases, you can harness this innovation simply by being the facilitator, not the driver. Um, the last thing that we heard from each of the associations that talked to us was um, roll the program out, small, let it roll across the country as they say, test how effective it is, build your success stories. A bunch of resources here for you if you're interested. Um, the chapter member engagement components as innovation incubators is a great blog post where you can learn a little bit more about how you might make this happen in your organization. Um, a quick word, just want to make a, make a point of saying to you that we know that some of you might be saying, oh, then I have to figure out how to get my chapters to do this. It sounds like a great idea, Peggy. I hear those four or five organizations did a great job. I get how important it is, but how do I do this? So really, you want to bring the chapters to the table by um, just encouraging that collaborative culture. Very importantly, Throw ideas out there and let them give feedback. The one that, that sparks their attention is going to be the one that they're going to take someplace. Empower, challenge them to take the initiative. So um, the big takeaway we heard was in each of these groups, it was a small time constraint. And it was very, very few, uh, focused on, um, on results. So folks were like, OK, I can do that. There's, it's clear. I know when done is. Um, I can galvanize some folks around it. This does require for many of us who are very used to sending the policies and procedures out, right, dictating, it really requires us to be a little bit more um, um, conciliatory, a little bit more step back, make the, put the ideal out there um, and see, see where you can make it happen. Um, one of the cool things with this, and I love the, um, the ASLA for this, is if you provide professional development opportunities, you have a more, a greater likelihood that folks are going to say, um, that folks are going to say to you, hey, yeah, I'm, I'm, I want to come and try that. So what, what, um, uh, what uh, the landscape artist did was they had, they said, if you're, if you're not trying Instagram with your folks, we're going to teach you how to use Instagram. We've already have the account set up. You're going to use our account, and then we're going to kind of work with you to help you create your own account if you want. So there was that professional development opportunity. But this could also be in the form of mentoring, of, of education at the chapter conference, uh, building it in so that folks are um, engaged and interested. Certainly, this is a place where you can bring in um, partners. 
um, where you can bring two associations in together, to, excuse, two chapters in together. This is where you're, you're creating connections for your folks. All right, number six. <laughs> can you train a volunteer to dance and play a musical instrument at the same time? Well, I think if you can train the bear, you certainly can. Um, let's talk a little bit about this. Um, one of the most important things, um, I love it, um, we were talking with some folks the other day, and um, my, my partner, Peter Hausel, many of you know him, um, said, you know, this is the deal, is that we don't have a chapter problem, we have a people problem. Um, at the end of the day, there's just not enough um, uh, energetic, uh, ready-to-go um, volunteers who can handle the job. We just we can't build success if there isn't the the if there isn't the individual there and the individuals. I was reading uh, Cynthia Diamore a blog post the other day and I loved it. <laughs> she makes one point. She said, "How do you know a chapter is successful?" She said, "Well, the success uh, success is how many of their how many members do they have engaged in small volunteer roles so how vibrant is their volunteer pool so yes it's about leadership we spend a lot of time putting um operational edicts around we talk about um we we talk about rules and regulations we get them up there and we tell them how to be careful about risk at the end of the day we're throwing stuff at them let's focus on the training um, and here's a couple of things to think about as you look at 2019 a little bit differently. First and foremost, remove those obstacles. We'll talk about that in just a little bit more. But you got to take money and time out of the equation. Um, great example is Beth Humphrey at, at, at um, Coupa HR. They're the college university uh, HR folks. Um, they use Paltoon to create some of the some of the the quick easy but right on target um, little video clips that, that, that teach people, that teach um, their leaders a couple of key things that they need to know um, about risk mitigation, about um, uh, marketing communications, um, about uh, bylaws, about um, meeting agendas. It's a couple of cool things. So if you can take money and time out by using technology to um, make it more accessible by make by chunking the content and by doing a great blend right of virtual face to face um, on demand, you're going to be good to go. Think of each and every one of these as designing an experience. I, I love, love, love what CAI does, the um, Community Association Institute. Um, they did at their chapter leaders conference last year. They took it to a whole new venue that was a um, a like a historical um, little um, side building in um, in I call it in the <laughs> the alleyway. It felt like of Washington D.C., but a totally different space. A little courtyard out. We brought in food trucks, um, created lots of polling. Um, had a, just a wonderful, wonderful, very, um, very uh, eclectic kind of a setup. It was just beautiful. It was an experience that people were talking about it. The next day, they had this incredible lounge inside their conference area that was just focused on directing a leader through to the spaces that they needed. So design the experience. Think about that. Um, Get your national connections involved. So I'm talking about staff. I'm talking about your partners. I'm talking about your vendors, your suppliers. Um, bring in those knowledge sources. Um, bring in more people. Get that conversation uh, really vibrant. Uh, let me just point out something again from CAI. They, you know, talk to the folks over there. They do an amazing, amazing job. One of the things that they do um, on one of their in-person meetings is um, they have, uh, you know, basically speed dating. But they bring their, their execs into their office. So rather than bringing the staff off-site to where the folks are meeting, they bring the execs in. And they, they have footprints on the floor. They guide them through. They get a chance to go into each person's office, sit and talk with them, ask their burning question, go to the next spot, including the CEO. All of a sudden, these execs and these volunteer leaders are seeing the staff face to face. The staff are seeing them. They're having real good conversations. They're creating those relationships. So um, use the leadership training. Think outside the box. It's not just about the leadership conference. 
And finally, and this may be one of the most important things I want to say, is you really have to make your session plans actionable, and you have to continue to support the chapters beyond any event, whether we're talking about a webinar, uh, a one-day workshop, a full conference leaders, uh, 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 chapter leaders conference, get beyond. So let me, let me, let me drive home the points about obstacles and encourage participation. Think of subsidy sponsorships, scholarships. Think about adding continuing education credit. Think about having that letter that helps build your case to management so that the volunteer leader can get time off, right? And create a 12-month plan. Do not think of your chapter leader conference in isolation. Oh, and then we have a couple of webinars. I need a conference call over here. Oh, and then there's this portal over here. We're just going to throw things into the portal. Instead, take a look at the 12-month plan. Build on-demand, virtual, and face-to-face. -face. So we've got a number of really good resources that you can uh, connect through and, and take a look at. Done some really incredible things. So I'm going to do a quick little pause here and just ask, how are people doing? Um, we've been going for not quite a half an hour. We're partway through our list. Uh, type in what, um, which of these that we've been talking about um, are speaking to you. What's, uh, what of this list so far is something that you feel is actionable for you? How do you change the conversation? Go ahead and get some, get, get some conversation going. And as you do that, I'm going to start on the second half of the list with number five, address the volunteer issue, because as we just said, we have a labor issue. So um, as I start this list, I just want to make, a, make sort of a side comment. Um, here's the deal. I'm a chapter exec, so I manage um, a, a PRSA Maryland chapter here out of Columbia, Maryland. Um, Peter is the exec for the DC Metro um, uh, appraisers and for the Maryland Recycling Network. And one of the things that we know intuitively is that national can, in fact, help chapters with the volunteer issue. Um, one of them is for you nationally, but also really push your chapters and your affiliates to embrace the new volunteer model, to shift the requirements, um, so shift the requirements for the traditional structure. Uh, I know we have it embedded in our affiliation agreements, et cetera, et cetera, this whole idea of, you know, the formal um, leadership. So soften them, release folks out of those, embrace the new volunteer model, help folks embrace it at the local level. Launch a new process for recruiting new volunteers. I love, love, love what RAPS has done with their volunteer portal because the volunteer portal lists not only jobs that are available or tasks that are available or opportunities that are available at the national level. You know what else they do? They list the stuff that's available locally. Um, I was going through um, a couple of portals the other day. I, I, I have a great opportunity to speak to about a dozen or more um, associations to their chapter leader programs, and I'm actually building a, a really cool um, five, five, four webinar series for a, a, an organization right now, and we're talking about some of these issues. I just ran into ILTA, which is the legal technology folks. Right at the top of their volunteering thing, they talk about getting involved in these ways. So if you will make this commitment, it will help your chapters, but it's going to help you too. Nationally, it's going to get your members more fully engaged. And research shows that doing one small thing, one small thing, increases your net promoter score, a.k.a. the loyalty index score, almost six points. It could take somebody who might not renew to a, I'm going to renew. So anyway, launch the new process for volunteers. Coach leaders on engaging volunteers. You know, we spend a lot of time in leadership conferences where we're going over rules and regs. You know what? Just step aside. Um, let's have a conversation about what is a new model and how do I engage volunteers? How do I change the way I'm talking to them? How do I make the ask different? Um, tap the low-hanging fruit. You've got folks at the national level who have served and they're looking for things to do. My gosh, talk to them about what it might be to help their local group. Just to tap in, tap out on time that they have. Um, 
part of that is making it easy for members to invite others to volunteer. Part of it is making a personal introduction for a current, uh, for a current leader to a future leader. So I saw this in play. I was at a, um, I was doing um, a leadership workshop at the beginning of a full conference for um, a group. And as we came outside, you know, people were sort of milling and stuff like that. And we had been talking about volunteering. And I saw um, uh, one of the one of the board members happened to see someone, waved to them, and brought them over, and then grabbed the current chapter president and said, "You guys need to talk." That's making a personal introduction. See if you can't make those things happen because that'll make um, make a big difference. Yes, I see that. Awesome. I see define the new volunteer model. And you know what? Let's talk about that. A couple of resources there for you. So here's the old model. It focused on the top. And the old model, um, uh, Becky, and to all of you, says that we're going to we're going to look at the officers, and then we're going to look at the board, um, and then we're going to look at the committees, and we're going to look at the titles that have to be filled, right? And we're focusing on what we need. So we're focusing on um, this position is empty. I need to find someone to fill this position. The problem with that is that when you start with the empty position, you haven't, you're, you're not starting with the person. And so you, so you haven't really figured out what you need and plugged a person in to something that you need that they want to do. So if we turn the focus upside down and focus on how they want to engage, we're going to change that model. Implicit in all of this is understanding that about 60% of association volunteers want non-term roles. 60% do not want a jail term. Okay, 60% want something that's time constrained or time restricted that is focused on getting something done, that has a measurable outcome, makes a difference. And yet, we're telling our chapters, and even nationally, build out the board. These are the officer positions you have to have. These are the other positions you have to have. Fill out this board. You have to have a director of membership. You have to have a chair of membership. You've got to have a membership committee. Well, instead of that, what's the real question? Well, the real question is, how do we engage our members in the chapter. Well, I would tell you that that is not a membership chair and a membership committee. I would tell you that that is a rich welcoming team. It's a talent scout with a talent pool, right? So focus on, on what are we trying to get done? Who do we need to get that done? And then look out there at the people and say, wow, you're a people person. Wow, you're a logistics person. Wow you get the meeting details down, right? So that's the new model. We can coach our folks if we give them the tools, the resources, and the opportunity to practice. One of the, one of the most uh, valuable things that I do when I'm out there and I'm working with folks is we practice. We practice all of that. Thank you, Becky, for asking that question. Happy to talk a little bit more about that. In fact, maybe, you know what, Sarah, make a note. Maybe we need to do one on how do we coach our, um, uh, how do we coach our chapter leaders on the new volunteer? Um, anyway, let's move on to number four and keep ourselves moving here. Um, I, um, <laughs> okay, Liesl, or Liesl, you bet, we will, we will, absolutely. <laughs> that is a great, a great conversation. Uh, the volunteer model is a really important conversation for all of us. Okay, number four. Um, remember, I, you know, all of these are important, but you're going to begin to see that these are the ones that, at least from Mariner's perspective, um, we really think are important if you're going to change the conversation. And, and if you're going to get the resources and the decisions you want, you have to shift, right? You have to look at the return on investment. Um, Peter always says to, says to me and to anybody else, you can't manage, but you don't measure. Um, and in fact, part of the problem is that oftentimes um, we we take the easy things to count and we make those the goals and we spend all of our time counting those things and we've missed completely um, the purpose that we need to do. So um, 
so let's talk about what you can do. Um, one of the things that uh, Mariners done a lot of work with work on, and and really it's 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 the conversations we're having with chapters that are do chapter organizations that are doing that are really um, really taking this to the next level. Folks like Patrick at um, GBTA is an example, but um, there there is an an ROI. Um, there is a, a, a an, an ROI tool. There is lots of um, information. We even did a webinar on um, measuring, on finding what you should measure and how you can measure it. And in that webinar, uh, Patrick shares the GPTA story, which is awesome. And we share some stories from some other folks. But in essence, what this is about is that if you can, if you can um, take a look at what the chapters are bringing to the table versus the cost and begin to show the positive ROI, presuming that there is one, right? Then you're able to shift the conversation with the C-suite to get you the resources that you need. If the ROI isn't positive, it gives you the opportunity to look at where am I currently spending the money, shift it, then if you get that positive ROI, you're a winner two times over in front of your, in front of your boss. So it's really about asking yourself, you know, what's the, what's the return on the investment? What are we getting from these folks? And I think that part of our problem is that we know how much it costs. We know what direct staff costs are. We know rebates or grants or the cost of our training programs, our tech platforms. But we haven't really taken a look at where that translates to value. So in the ROI valuation matrix, we're prompting you to ask questions about uh, about what, how your chapters are part of your distribution channel, your marketing comm channel, your listening channel, your next gen. These are just a couple of them. We we look at them in terms of membership. We look at them um, in terms of member engagement and in terms of your volunteers. But here's the thing: if you will um, do this value matrix, let's say on the on the distribution, the chapter sales association products. You price the service, you price the volunteer contribution, and you find the indirect cost. By doing this, okay, by doing this, you can then have numbers to go back and talk to your C-suite to adjust the resources that you have. So I am seeing in the chat, I hope you guys are all multitasking and taking a look at this because um, – um, we have, um, we've got, a, uh, Sarah's been, Sarah's really um, suggested something here. She said, we have planned six leadership workshops at various locations around the U.S. We conducted eight monthly webinars. Sarah, you are an example of, 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 a, um, of, a, of a CRP who has said, let's do this holistically. Let's look not at one, but pulling it all together. So love to have you share some more. Um, and I love it. <laughs> I just happened to see because I'm on one of the things that says, would you like to do a podcast? If you guys want Sarah to tell you more about how she's put together her plan and how she's put together her training, type in, yes, Sarah, and we'll, <laughs> we'll connect her. Um, I think that means, Sarah, you will have been um, voluntold, so come join us <laughs> for that particular one. Guys, this is how we do it. You guys – Come on to a webinar, you chat something cool, we take that coolness and we package it and bring it back to you. And you know what? That's what your chapters do too, right? That's the value matrix. All right, number three, do something different with your chapter management. Okay, I just need to go back one time. Take a look at this. Would you not like to be able to kick out the bad stuff? <laughs> okay, all right, all right. So let's do something different. So we did a hackathon at um, ASAE Annual. Oh, by the way, by the way, are any of you coming to the membership marketing um, conference, the ASA conference in June? Um, hey, Sarah, do me a favor. Can you um, shoot out the, um, the dates for that? Guess what? They've asked us to repeat the chapter hackathon at that conference. Yes, yes, indeed. So you'll be able to do this. But anyway, what came out of the first hackathon were a couple of ideas. Creating tops. Okay, this is a tool for optimizing optimization and performance streaming. It's a streamlined chapter management tool. We're still interested in getting people together who want to play with this idea. So let us know. The um, uh, 
one of the groups um, really embraced the meetup.com um, and they talked about some virtual unchapters. Really, really super simple group structure. I just had an amazing conversation with the CXPA um, on their networks and going to watch for a blog post on that. I interviewed one who just started up uh, the local chapter here. I had an amazing conversation. It's going like gang fires and some very simple things about how you can do that. So yes, um, that kind of tool. And then there was a flexible, strong, configurable chapter solution, which is a platform for chapter leaders to share their experience. So these three items were, um, were ones that um, came out of our hackathon. These are ideas that we're still working on and ideas that we're really looking for your input on. Because if we think that this could help, we can do it. But you know, some organizations are doing this. PMI, they have an amazing portal where folks have access to tools, they can give feedback. So there are folks that are doing some of these things. So I really recommend that you share what you're doing and we'll go ahead and, um, and, and share back out with you. The last thing, and this was a really cool thing that came out of here, it's called a Components Kickstarter. So here's the model. The idea here is to put a fund, right? and then um, allocate a fund and then allow um, chapters to put up ideas and have them voted up and then provide some funding there. The secondary thing to do is to put up, just like a Kickstarter, folks just throw up their ideas. The ones that get a lot of interest, then the board goes and looks for funding for it. Um, a great way to bring in some sponsor dollars. Get a couple of your um, folks that really want to invest in the chapter program because that's where they get to sell their product. You know, your vendors, you know your suppliers and vendors that do that, right? Um, get them to maybe have this, have a contest and then they'll fund the program that looks the most interesting. Anyway, real exciting idea there about chapter management. So you're not kind of always giving it, you're letting the community pull together. Okay. Here's some resources for you. Take a look at the blog post. Lots of cool things. Put the day, June 6th. We're going to be on day one for that. So go ahead. And oh, by the way, there's going to be a second session that we're doing on June, on June 7th. So if you haven't signed up, maybe you want to. <laughs> okay. We don't get any money from that. Um, I got to tell you, though, the hackathon provides not only answers and solutions here, but the hackathon is an incredible opportunity for you to do something different with your groups. So consider maybe using it to engage volunteers to design new solutions to old problems. Let's say that you've got a tech solution that's not working. Pull them in the room. Have them help you create the difference. Um, make sure that you, um, that you use questions that are going to make a difference. So what do you do to make your chapters? So, so, <laughs> so these are the ones we used. We said, OK, guys. Uh, what do you do that makes your chapters seem that your chapters think is kind of silly? Like, have you asked your chapters, like, this is kind of silly, why are you asking me to do that? Um, or what guidelines do they audit, or they routinely miss or ignore? Um, make sure that, um, you know, rethink your resources, uh, CRP community, Slack, Excel. So what we came out of a hackathon was when, when we, you know, the three or four ideas, some of them are going to take some more, like, group working, but a couple of folks immediately said, hey, I've got that, let me share it. So take some of the ideas that come maybe from your hackathon when you're solving, let's say you you're brought your groups in and they're solving it and they come up with something, go out and use your community to be able to do that. Um, just know that you can, you can motivate your chapters to, for, uh, to be involved and be engaged. Um, and finally, I think the hackathon really has an opportunity for you to change the resource question. Yes, freedom to fail, freedom to fail. Okay, number two, moving right along, find the member sweet spot. How many of you happen to participate in our um, January webinar. The January webinar, we talked about member journey mapping. Um, type in if you were there and what your takeaway was. So one of the things about, um, one of the things about being a chapter-based organization is we all sometimes have this happening with our chapters. Um, sometimes it's because we have a system that allows local-only members. Sometimes it's difficult for chapters, like for my group, 
um, because there was a contingent membership, you have to join national, join local. Um, and here's the thing, it, 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 all of these things are getting us to think about these in silos. We think about the members down here and the members up here. Well, the member journey mapping process is an opportunity for you to get rid of the silo and for you to think about this more holistically. It's really about optimizing the national chapter intersection. What we found that when you do this, it allows you to trans um, to um, to translate those local only members to recruit them to be national members. It helps you sell dual membership. It creates alignment. It helps make resource decisions. And and this is critical. We being the national and your local leaders better understand the member. And when that happens, what can we do? Well. We can optimize the programming and the other things that we offer members. Um, we have found, and in the and please go back and look at the webinar because we talk specifically about engaging the next generation and how mapping this journey can allow a national association to do that. So, member journey mapping, walk a mile in your member's shoes, is the blog post that shares some of the things that we had from there. But take a look at that because it makes it. it this will really help you find that intersection and build success. Now, before we leave this, I want to just show you um, a picture of this because I think this might kind of bring it to life. This is an actual journey map that we did for PRSA Maryland and PRSA National. And it follows a, um, a next gen as they went through. And we looked at where there was intersections. And now here's the interesting thing. It's a contingent membership. So this member, did join because she had two through the employer, but this was not a decision necessarily. The decision that, that was made, though, was all around going to the first event, getting involved. So she entered the awards uh, pro program. She got, she was involved. When you, when, when she got involved, she began to see the value of the chapter. At any one of these steps, national could be a supporting mechanism. So when we talked about here, step five and step six. Imagine if you were, um, as soon as a, uh, a chapter had not their board, because we always ask for the president and, the, and maybe the president-elect and the treasurer and secretary, but ask for the list of new volunteers. You can do a welcome, right? National can say, hey, I understand your, your, your thumbs up. We understand you're involved at the local level. Very cool. When they attend a, um, an annual conference or get involved in it, if you share registration lists, you can also welcome them. Um, and certainly when they get elected in number in step nine to the chapter board, a big welcoming um, push to them. Um, so when you map this out, then you and your chapter is going to have a conversation about where is the intersection, where can I help you at steps where I can make a difference. Um, where are there steps where maybe if I help out, it can really help me move some of my program's uh, objectives? And where, where when it's happened, so when step two, when they join national through the employer, the, the, the chapter membership is not automatic. So how are you helping the chapter at that particular point in time? Okay. We have reached the top. So... This is, in my mind, perhaps one of the most important things that we can talk about in this, in this webinar. So buckle your seatbelts. What I want to do is um, bring you some advice, not from Peggy and Sarah and Charlotte and Peter and, and Mark, but from folks. Um, actually, the, the TED Talks that we had at our, at our sexy, um, really good advice on how you can level up. At the end of the day, all of these things are fun, but you need to have different conversations. And those conversations you need to have are with the people that are making the decisions in your organization, right? So let's talk about that. First up is understanding speaking the language of the C-suite. Um, we had um, two execs talking with us. Um, and a um, CRP, Patrick, who um, really had a, an incredible win with, with the C-suite. And then we had a next Jenner who has made some incredible changes in, um, in his chapter, in his locale, and, and with his national organization. All of them said you got to get the language right. 
you gotta um, you, you gotta you gotta speak in their language to get your voice heard. And one of the best ways to do this is to don't close down when the CEO is speaking or the CFO or your boss. Listen to the words that they're using. Listen to the language. Look at their agendas. What's important to them? Truly understand um, where they're coming from and the words that they use so that when you have conversations, you can use those same words. You can hit those same bullet points. Understanding their challenges and concerns allows you to pick it, to pull it back in again. So if you've got a real, a real issue, let's say with, um, we talk with one organization and they're seeing attendance of the national organization, of the national conference go down. Understand the challenge. Ask, what have we tried? Ask, what are the trends? Uh, get the information, get the story behind that. And then when you come and you can apply what your components, your affiliates can do, when you can offer up some suggestions, you're offering up suggestions to the challenges that they've identified. And finally, understand their goals and their strategies. Draw the lines, how do components fit? One of the things you can do is sit down with each department and say, okay, If you needed to get your job done and it had something to do with local, you know, how could, in a perfect world, how would you want the local group to work with you? Or, hey, I understand that you've got a um, an advocacy and I realize it's, you know, you're trying to get Congress and, and the Senate, I know you wanted to have a fly-in, but not everybody can fly in. Um, what else can they do? So you're asking those questions, and then you're saying, wow, so the components fit into your strategy. Let's talk about how I can help you with that. Two, show the role of the components and components in the association ecosystem. So get rid of the silos that the chapters or the, or the affiliates are over here, and they're just something else that we turn our attention to. Show how in this ecosystem, and you can do this by looking at your demographic data, by looking at your engagement data, but sit back and say, okay, so we have members and we have members and the personas are like this. And if you'll notice that in two of the personas, an important part is getting involved in local community. In this persona here, it's getting involved in a virtual and a local, so it's by issue, interest, and geography. And over here, it's really discipline and um, an and issue. Paint them the full picture because now, now components are inside the bigger picture and you can help them see how they drive that value. Find the data, find the stories, um, help them see the components as an opportunity to be leveraged, not a structure to be managed, okay? Um, it's really a strategic asset, and that ROI that we talked about will happen. But if you can really take the conversation and place it in the bigger picture for them. Okay, let's talk about building um, uh, the reputation of the relationships with senior staff. Spend as much time with them as you can. I know around the water cooler, if you've got a large office, you may tend to stay in your own department. You know what? Get outside. Okay, when there's a... Um, when there's an all-staff meeting, sit next to somebody you haven't sat next to in a while, or maybe never, right? Um, find out what makes our job tough. So ask questions. You know, we have two of these and one of these uh, for a reason. Um, Crucial Conversations, awesome book. Pick it up, read it. It'll help you with that listening, and it'll help you with asking questions. And then become a resource. I know you're busy. I get it. I understand, really, because I'm very busy, too. We're all very busy. But when, they, when you hear them ask a question out in, the, out in the office or you see an all email that goes out or you hear a conversation, be the one that comes up with, uh, with a resource or a solution. Um, maybe it's to make their job easier. Maybe, you know, it's something that they can then support. But take that time. Be accessible and transparent. Listen, if the data doesn't line up, say it doesn't line up and say why it doesn't line up. Um, Make sure that you're giving them data. Um, talk with the chapter leaders. Tell them how this data will be used. Um, leverage what they know to help you. Um, make yourself available uh, and be transparent. It's really important. Um, 
take advantage of your relationships that you have with uh, chapter leaders and with your average member um, so that you can, you know, collect strategic information, um, analyze what you learn, uh, identify strategic trends uh, and opportunities. Um, one of the things that we hope that we do here with, um, with the Bill Highway web webinars and at CEX is shine a light on some trends. You know, don't hesitate to take something that you've learned here and shoot it over and say, hey, by the way, you know, um, let me give you a great example. Chapter benchmarking studies coming out, right? So first and foremost, go ahead and um, fill it out if you haven't already. Share it with your CEO, CFO, your, C your um, exec manager. Say, hey, listen, here's a benchmarking study. It's going to help us understand how we compare and contrast. It's going to help us understand, you know, what are most people giving. It's going to help us understand how people are valuing. So fill it out. Let them know you're filling it out. When the results come and the report comes out, take your responses against this and go back to them and say, hey, check this out. By the trend lines, X, Y, and Z is the case. We're not doing that yet. So you need to, you need to find the strategic information and keep it available. That's why we're here, guys, by the way, so that we can do that. All right. Have I convinced you in this almost 60 minutes that you can have a different conversation? Well, I've got one more option for you. One more thing that I want you to think about, and that is to adopt the strategic mindset. Understand that um, you work with chapters for national. Understand that you are here to engage this group of members, this, you, this specific group of members, in helping the organization move the mission and meet members' needs. So think about that. Where's the balance? And where can you, where can you make a difference to the larger picture. The focus is on the national strategic vision. You have the strategy for allowing this group to make a difference. I know we have to be in the weeds a lot, right? Take time to step back. So what's your number one out of all of these things? What's your action item? What are you going to do leaving here? I've just thrown 10 different concepts at you. Maybe it's the last one. Maybe you're going to sit back and you're going to say, hmm, let me think. Maybe the best thing I can do, maybe the best thing I can do is to sit back and say, how can I, how can I create chapters as a strategy? I, can, I know I'm putting out fires, but how can I sit back and give myself time to think about that? So, Jill, I love that. You have a philosophy that your chapter should be locally relevant and contribute to the national direction. How can you find a unique way in 2019 to demonstrate that, to measure that, to show the C-suite what you need to make that happen? That's the call to action for all of us. Change the conversation. Come on, guys. Type in while we finish up, we wrap up. You've just spent 60 minutes with us. We love you for that. But we want to make sure that there's something else that you can do. We want to make sure that this 60 minutes has been valuable. Like I said, treasure trove. You, you agree? Treasure trove in this particular slide deck? I mean... <laughs> amazing resources, links, ideas, it's going to come to you. So even if your action item is simply, I'm going to look at it when it comes through and click through to some of those. All right. It has been wonderful. I mentioned the 20, uh, the, the, the current benchmarking study. It does close on Friday. I really do want everyone to be involved. If you need help with finding this link, um, hey, um, I'm going to ask if if my buddy, uh, Sarah, can you throw that link 
into the chat, please um, go ahead, act now. We want as vibrant a response as possible so that we can get some really good solid data for all of you. Okay. Um, hey, <laughs> brand new news. <laughs> get your calendars out. Mark this date. Mark this date, October 18th, 2019. CEX coming your way. We're going to be downtown um, Washington, D.C. We've got the location. We've got the date. All we need now is you. Hey, guys. It's been a true pleasure being with you. Hope you can change the conversation. Stay in touch. Talk to you soon. <laughs>